other news now. With the Libyan rebels rejecting an African Union peace plan, there seems to be no end in sight for the conflict. The opposition is still relying on coalition forces to help its cause, but it seems it could prove more of a hindrance. It's been claimed that allies have used depleted uranium, a substance which causes cancer and mutations in those affected. Ghani Chichikan investigates. These Libyan men cheer on top of a tank hit by coalition forces, unaware of the silent killer they could be breathing in as they celebrate. Though the Western coalition denies using depleted uranium in bombings in the country, others say there is a good chance weapons with the highly poisonous radioactive element have been used. That kind of damage, that, there's a really good chance that was a DU round. I'm about 80, 90 percent sure that was a DU round. That's really stupid. Anybody who's on it is getting low-level radiation exposure. See the, the level of the wind blowing? Yeah. That means the particles are in the air. So all of these people in these cars are being exposed. Melissa Sterry served in the U.S. military during the first Gulf War in the early 1990s, clearing up battlefields in Kuwait. Back then, the U.S. dropped more than 350 tons of depleted uranium over Kuwait and Iraq. Pictures of bombings from Libya seem all too familiar. You see how there's touches of red? That's the burning. See how it shoots out instead of a cone straight up and you've got the flare at the bottom? That's a DU explosion. Depleted uranium in military terms is highly efficient, relatively cheap and powerful enough to penetrate the heaviest armor. NATO flatly denies its use in Libya. Even though the UN Human Rights Commission has called for a ban, countries who refuse to sign up include the US, the UK, France and Israel. The smallest particles of uranium, nanoparticles, are the most dangerous. Once inhaled, they get into the blood and can spread into any organ, including the heart, brain, liver. Once the particles penetrate your cell tissue, this is when you get all kinds of genetic mutations. And people in Iraq, for example, breathe in that contaminated air every day. And experts say there's no way to fight it. In Fallujah, in Iraq, where the U.S. dropped thousands of depleted uranium rounds after the 2003 invasion, a quarter of all babies are born with a range of horrendous abnormalities. Higher rates of cancer, leukemia and infant mortality have been found here than after the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The U.S. and the British military admitted widespread use of depleted uranium in bombing Bosnia in 1995, a legacy felt today, with cancer and leukemia rates several times higher than normal. We've got total medical confirmation all around Fallujah, Iraq, that the uh, health effects of the uranium are there, and we see it throughout Iraq, our Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Afghanistan, Somalia, the Balkans. And uh, again, now we're seeing it uh, moving into uh, Libya. Dr. Doug Rocky, who was a leading specialist in the cleanup after the Gulf War, says there is no way of actually decontaminating affected areas. I was given a written memorandum to lie about the health and environmental effects of uranium munition. He himself was exposed to depleted uranium. Almost all of the members of his team are now dead. The first Gulf War left one in four American soldiers disabled. Only around 260 veterans were tested for depleted uranium out of almost 700,000 deployed for the war. Every time I've asked to be tested for exposure to depleted uranium, people have refused to give me the test. Some fear that the suffering of those bombed in areas where there will be no Western troops will go unnoticed. Depleted uranium has a half-life of four and a half billion years. Hence, its description by some as the silent killer that will never stop killing. Ganesh Shekhan, RT, Washington.